Just in case I say something intelligent. When you're going through the comps, part of the script says, have you seen this property? Everybody with me so far, right? The presentation says, Mr. Marceau, now have you seen this property? Most of the time, what does the seller say? No. No. No, I haven't. When you can then say, well, I've been in this property. Okay. I've been in this property. When you can, when they say they haven't seen it and you can say you've been in it, who has control of the situation? We do. We do. How can you, how could you possibly, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, debate me on price when you haven't seen any of these properties and I've been inside all of them, right? You instantly have control. So when you preview property, you can overcome some of these price objections. Everybody with me? Yes. All right. Sound good. Okay. So that's, that's the overview. You got to memorize the scripts. You got to preview property every day. Okay. Now, step two, create a prospecting plan. Now, step one is the most important part of the prospecting. <laughs> Don't start prospecting until you've mastered points one and two. Okay. Don't start prospecting until you know the scripts and you know what's going on in your marketplace in terms of previewing. Don't do it. Okay. You have to know the scripts. You have to know your, your, your marketplace before you can start prospecting. Okay. Step two in creating a prospecting plan. Prospect daily, once in the afternoon, once in the morning, once in the afternoon when it comes to expires. Okay. Remember, we're only talking about expires right now. Why daily? Why do you think it's important to do it daily? Market change daily. Market changes. Yep. Why else? You have to be consistent. Consistent. Consistency is key. What? Why? What? What is? We're we're getting closer. What's the? What's so, the importance of consistency? Do you feel comfortable and confident? Consistency and is a habit. Every day, and become better and better in our skills. Yeah, better and better in our skills. Consistency okay. is a habit. It's keeping that skill sharp. Okay. I, I'm going to keep saying this, and I apologize for being annoying, but it's it's just that important. When I'm prospecting expires, I have to be A+. Plus. I can't prospect once a month or once a week and be A+. Plus. I've got to do it daily. Now, here's the key, though. You don't have to prospect hours daily on expires, but but you got to call a couple a day at least, Okay. To, you know, you know, call three a day, whatever the case may be. But I, I got to do it daily to keep my skills sharp, to keep my mind sharp on this particular source, to keep myself at an A plus level. Now, once in the morning, okay, because maybe I can get there early. Why do you think the afternoon is is also valuable? Why do you I think catch those people yeah, that you couldn't talk to in the morning? I may, maybe, maybe, but I didn't talk to them in the morning. Is it possible that by 8 30, 9 o'clock, these people are so frustrated with the amount of phone calls they have that they don't answer their phone? Is that possible? Absolutely. Yes. So, what happens with an expired is between 9 and 3 or 9 30 and 3, they don't answer the phone anymore. So, and you, most agents are trying to be first, right? I got to get to them first. I got to get to them first. I got to get to them first, which is ridiculous, by the way. Okay. Tony Smith taught me years ago. Don't worry about being first. Just be the best. Okay. But so everyone's trying to get there first. So they're getting hammered. Well, nobody calls them at four o'clock in the afternoon. So three o'clock comes around, they decide to turn their phone back on because they're finally ready to start answering phone calls again. Hopefully that their phone is died down. And then they get a call at four o'clock and it's like, well, who's this person? And boom, there you are. So you might have an opportunity to catch them in the afternoon simply because they finally turned their phone back on. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. So I call them in the morning, I call them in the yes. afternoon. Now, I'm going to say something. I know some of you don't follow this rule, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Stop trying to call them at six o'clock in the morning. Expired people with expires and calling like super early. I don't get it. You know, 
because you know, first of all, you're only allowed to call people starting at 8 a.m. But then people started calling expired. Well, I wanted to be first, so I'll call them at 7:30, and then it became 7:15, and then seven, and now it's like, well, I start calling at 6:45. What five o'clock in the morning going to be next? Hey, it's your wake up call. Hello, your home expired. I'm sure that's what they want to hear when they wake up in the morning. Okay. Just, no, it's so stupid. Get them on the phone. Get them on the. Okay. Just get them on the phone. Don't worry about calling them. Yes, Wendy. I have a question. So, would you think that, okay, so based on your experience, would morning or afternoon have a better success rate? Well, I would do both. But, but if I'm going to call in the morning, I want to call, I, I would want to call before 10. Okay. Because from 10 to three, they're probably not going to answer the phone anymore. So calling an expired at 11, probably not going to get you great results. Okay. But I wouldn't call them, but I'm, but I, I don't agree with the mentality of people saying, well, I want to be first. So I'm going to start calling them at seven or six 45. And, and this rush to get to people way, way early. It, you know, it's, it, it's not, there's no, there, there's, it's all mindset because I've asked, I've gone through all these different studies, asking all these different agents, not only with our company, but all across the place, you know, is there a certain time that gets you the most appointments? None of them say, well, yeah, 645. I, that's when I get my most appointments. And there's no proof that that is the best. To, being the first to call them is, is the way to go. Now, you, you want to get into a time. That's what I'm saying before 10, because you don't want to be in that zone where they're no longer answering their phone. Okay. So I would try to do it before 10 and then skip maybe from 10 to three and then try again in the afternoon for those expires that you didn't get a hold of. Okay. But that's what you want to try to go after. Now, Wendy, yes, Wendy. It's me and my question. Sorry. So no, no, no. Would, ask, ask. Okay. So would you suggest maybe, okay, so I call them, they don't answer. I don't leave them a voicemail and then I text them. Sure. And sometimes they respond to texts. They don't respond to the phone calls. So is sure. there a script or text or something along those lines where we can just be like copy paste and then see, because I've had a better success rate with text messages, to be honest. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, obviously, you know, your home expired. I specialize in helping sellers like yourself get home sold that didn't sell the first time. I just want 15 minutes of your time. Okay. That, that could be number one, or I, I could go either. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I know you're getting bombarded with calls, but 90 only, but 95 homes closed in your area in the last 90 days. So I know homes are selling in your marketplace. I'd love to just spend 15 minutes to see what we can do to get it sold. Okay. That could be number two. Number three which is more ideal is if you had a recent sale in the area, Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I know you're getting bombarded with calls, but I just sold a home in your area. Okay. We had multiple offers. We ended up selling it for a list price. So I know I can sell homes in your marketplace. I just want 15 minutes to show you how I did it. Okay. I like that. Okay. Short, quick, you know, right to it. Okay. Can you repeat the number one, please? Yep. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I know you're getting bombarded with a lot of phone calls, but I specialize in helping people like yourself who didn't get their home sold the first time to make sure it gets sold this time. Got it. Thank you, Robert. I just, I, I just want 15 minutes. The 15 minutes part is key. I just want 15 minutes. Give me a call. Excuse me, Robert. Um, so can I text those people who are DNC? DNC, yes, you can text, cannot call. Okay, I can text. That's good to know. Thank you. Yep. Robert, what about the reason you're working with qualified approved buyer that wanted to move to in the area? Yeah, if you if you have a buy, yeah, if you have a buyer that is 
if you actually have a buyer that yes. fits that property description, then you could say, hey, I know you're getting bombarded, with, but I wouldn't approach that to try to, but I would make sure I'm not trying to get their listing. So meaning that, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, look at, I'm not trying to get your listing like every other agent. I legitimately have a buyer. I'd like to know if I could bring my buyer by to see your property and see if we can make it work. That would work. That, that would be the text I would send. Um, a phone call would be a little more, a little bit more than that. But yeah, if I have a, if I legitimately have a buyer for them, I'm not trying to get the listing. I'm just trying to see if I can get in the door with the buyer. Okay, thanks. All right, good job. Okay, now third part of creating prospecting plan, going to the doors is better than calling. Now it's less efficient because it takes more time. You won't get through as many, but most people are not going to do that. They're going to call. They won't go to the doors. And sometimes you get that face-to-face -face interaction. You might have a better chance. We've actually had listings with expireds where they answered the door because they didn't know it was a real estate agent because they figured the real estate agents would only call. So they answered the door and it was a real estate agent and we ended up getting appointments and stuff that way. So if, if you can get to the doors, okay? So you're not going to get to a bunch of expireds but you can get to the doors on some of the maybe the newer expires and, and better expires. All right, good. Okay, questions on steps one and two before we go through the training program. Okay, really quick. Did you put the link in the chat? Is it because I can't seem to click on what it I'm says? Not, this. I, have, I have not put it there yet. Oh, okay. okay I'm no going to put it at the end. All right, so the training program. Week one. You're going to write out the expired listing script in its entirety, all seven days, and role play the expired listing script 30 minutes per day for five days. So you're just going to take the basic expired listing script, you're going to hand write it out every day, okay? Every day, not seven days and seven times in one day and call it a week. You got to write it out every day, okay? I know some of you are scheming over there, okay? Okay. and role play the expired listing scripts 30 minutes per day for five days. Okay, that's week one. Preview. Preview at least 10 homes in your marketplace, five that have been on the market under 30 days and five that have been on the market 30 days or longer. Okay, because you want to try to get an idea of what's selling versus not selling. Okay, because an expired, it's pot could it is it possible that you meet an expired and they say, Well, my name, I know my neighbor's selling for 950 and my house is better, so I want to sell it for a million. Is that possible? <laughs> well, yeah. if I previewed that home at 950 and that home's been on the market for 45 days, I can then go to the seller and say, Hey, well, I know that there's there you're selling it for 950, but guess what? It's not selling, it's listed at 950. Hold on one second. Sorry, I had to close my office door. Uh, so if I can preview the homes that have been on the market for longer than 30 days, I know a better idea of what's not selling, which is just as valuable as what is selling, okay? Accountability, you could send your written scripts to admin at century21masters.com and then record your role play and send the recording to me. I will listen, okay, and give you some feedback. Now, here's the thing, expired prospecting, none. Not going to call any expireds first week. Okay, that's week one. Week two, scripts. Now we're going to the objection handlers. You're going to write out, we've decided not to sell objection handler in its entirety all seven days and role play the expired listing script with the we've decided not to sell objection handler for 30 minutes per day. So meaning that whatever you're role playing, you say, when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job selling your home, they say, we've decided not to sell. Boom, you jump right into that objection handler. Okay, so you're going to write out that objection handler seven days, and then you're going to role play it 30 minutes a day, five days a week, five days for that week. Same thing, you're going to preview 10 homes in your marketplace, five that have been on the market under 30 days, five that have been on the market 30 days or longer. You can send your scripts to admin, record your role play, and you're still not prospecting. Robert, I hate you. I'm aware. Okay. 
We're two weeks into this training. I haven't called any expired yet. I know. Takes time. Takes time. Okay. Week three, scripts. Now you're going to write out the we're relisting with the same agent objection handler, which is my favorite. I love it. In its entirety, all seven days. And then you're going to role play the expired listing script with the we are relisting with the same agent objection handler 30 minutes per day, five days. Okay. Same thing. You're going to preview 10 homes, five that have been on the market for under 30 days, five 30 days or longer. Send your accountability. Now, here's the thing on week three. You can send your scripts and then you get to role play with me, which nobody wants to do. However, I'm going to throw it out there as just a, just a carrot for anyone who is interested. However, I'm only going to do it if you've done all the assignments for the first two weeks. And I am on the admin email, so I'll know if you actually sent in your scripts. All right. So then I can role play. We, you and I can role play. And then you're going to start prospecting. Woo Finally. Yay. But you're only going to call 10. 10 expires for the week can be new or old. Okay. Now, this is an important note. When calling old expires, make sure you understand what was happening in the market at the time it expired. That's important. Let me give you an example. In 2021, was the real estate market pretty advantageous for sellers? I lost everyone after I said no yes, prospecting for yes, the first two yes, weeks. Of Got course. it. Yes. Sellers. Okay. So 2021 was pretty advantageous for sellers. I mean, to the point to where you could take a listing, do a couple spins in your chair, and you'd have 24 offers, all above list price, no contingencies, all that stuff, right? Okay. Yes. So when I'm calling old expireds, why would I call someone that expired in 2021? Do you have any idea how hard it was to have your home expire in 2021? <laughs> like, do you have any idea how unmotivated you had to be to have your home expire in 2021? So I have to know what's going on in the marketplace because I'm calling expires from 2020 and 2021. It doesn't make any sense. How could you not have gotten your home sold during that time? It's crazy. Okay. I'm dealing with an unmotivated unqualified seller. No reason to call people that expired during that time. Now, however, April or January, I'm sorry, April 2022 to December 2022, was it a little less advantageous for sellers? Yes. 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 So that now from an old expired standpoint, there's my there's a great target for me. You expired from April to December of 2022 all day. Right. So you have to know what's going on in the marketplace at the time they expired because it might not be worth it. All right. All right. Now, week four, you're going to write. Now, you've already written out the expired script. You've written out two of the objection handlers. Now you're on to the last one, which is we've already chosen an agent. Same thing. You're going to write that out in its entirety, all seven days. Role play the expired listing script for at least five days, 30 minutes. You're going to preview the 10 homes. You're going to send the written scripts to me. You're going to role play. And then uh, I can role play with you. But again, only if you've done things in the first three weeks. Now you're going to contact 20 expired listings for the week, which can be new or old. Okay. Four weeks. Now let's be honest. This is a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, you're handwriting out a script every day for four weeks. When you look at it, you're role playing an additional because you probably role play, you know, with the company or something else. So you're going to role play an additional 30 minutes a day, five days a week. You know, you're going to end up previewing 10 homes a week. So that's 40 homes over the course of the month, that four weeks. It's a lot of work. But if you did this for four weeks, you could set yourself up to be great at expires for 40 years. All you have to do is commit to really commit to four weeks of being good at this. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. A lot. Four weeks. Four weeks. Okay. So now here's some final thoughts on expireds. Don't forget the practice and role play is what builds confidence and helps you take action daily. Review your goals. Okay. Your big goal 
is the first 30 days after training. So the first four weeks you're doing it, that 30 days after that, is to go your goal is to go on four appointments and get two list and to get two listings that's the goal you do the first four weeks of just that training program the next 30 days that should be the goal you can do it if you follow the plan now here's the biggie though if you miss a day you have to go back and start over on day one okay this is a commitment Calling expires is a commitment. It's not a hobby. It's not a, when I have time, it's not a, well, yeah, sure. You know, might as well give it a shot. It's a commitment. You miss a day. You got to go start over it back at day one. Most people will just give up and just go, ah, screw this. I'll just call my expires. And then they won't close any business. And then, you know, all that other fun stuff. You got to stay consistent with it. You got to follow the plan. Okay which leads to this point right here. If you're not committed to this training program, don't bother prospecting expires because you're not going to get any deals. You're going to get frustrated. You'll make the seller more angry for the other agents that are prospecting them. So all you're doing is pissing off the seller for the rest of us, okay? Because you're calling them going, hey, Mr. Seller, um, so I know, look, yeah, your home expired, but you know, I think maybe I could be the one, possibly if you're interested, on, and I could get your home sold. God Damn it, <laughs> you're the 20th person that's called me. I'm in an eye on your way through the scripts. Okay, and then and then someone else calls who's really polished and could do it, but now the seller's really angry. Okay, don't screw it up for the rest of us. Questions on the expired plan of action. So once we write it out, how do you want it? Uh, take a picture of it, send it to you? Yeah, take a picture, send it to... Um, admin at century21masters.com okay and uh, that way i that, i say admin that way if i don't because that goes to all of the admin and myself um okay. so that way if i miss it you know jesse or ashley or someone like that can see it so that way you get credit for it okay is this doable? Yes. Yes, Robert. There you go. All right. All right. Do you want me to go over for sale by owners next, or are you already fed up with me? No. Is that why don't I'm answer. Here? Don't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question. Go for it. Me and my questions. Sorry. Wendy, ask uh, more questions. So uh, for canceled. Um, I know this has nothing to do with like the expireds or the for sale by owners, but is there anything that we can take from these two pawns where we can just kind of combine it and maybe work with canceled? Do you even recommend calling canceled? Is that something treat it treat it canceled the same way you would treat an expired? Okay. Same way. Let them be the ones to tell you that it expired for something different. Go in every time you call a cancel, go in with the mentality that they canceled because they fired their agent. Okay. okay. So, so it's the same concept, right? Look, I see that your home came up as a canceled listing. I'm just calling to see when do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Cool. Well, we canceled because um, I was hoping to get a job transfer to Arizona, but didn't go through. So now we're not selling. Oh, okay. Like, let them be the ones to tell you that this is why it canceled. Go in with the mentality that they cancel because it's like, this agent sucks. I don't want to work with you anymore. You're done. Like, that's what I'm going in with that mentality. So it's okay. the same. I'm going to treat it the same way as an expired. Cool. Really good question. All right. Let's run through for sale by owner real quick. Actually, here, I promised I was going to share this. So I'll post this in the chat box. There you go. All right. Plan of action for for sale by owners. See look how detailed I am. I have this whole thing written out. All right. So same thing. I have a bunch of different scripts here. Now for sale by owners, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. So um, there's the survey script, the Mike Ferry survey script. There's And then you have the pre-qualifying script and the listing presentation. Same thing on the pre-qualifying listing presentation. You got to be know those scripts because if you're not, a plus when you're calling for sale by owners, it's not going to work. Okay. Now there's a number of different objection handlers for, for sale by owners. There's the Tony Smith one. 
Okay. Which is the one that we do all the time. You know, how long do you want to stay in third place? Um, you have Dan Evans. Now, Dan Evans one is a little bit different because Dan Evans is essentially saying, um, yeah, you know what? You could sell your house. Right. You know, like, and he actually says, I can appreciate that. And selling in this market really isn't the problem, right? Your home is going to sell. Like he's, so his objection handler is I'm going to take it from a different angle. Like, yeah, if you price it right, you can sell it. So there's, so anyway, so there's a couple different here. Mary Hamilton, right. Is a, a little bit of a shorter, you know, imagine you're in a room with yourself and there are 10 people. Now I'm in a room with a thousand people. Where are you going to get the better price? Right. So there's a few different objection handlers here. You pick which one ever, whichever one works for you, but you got to have something, um, Right. And then you got Neil's objection handler here as well. So a few different ways you can go about it. Now, here's kind of the plan previewing. So there are a couple of different techniques. So Neil has this approach on for sale by owners of previewing the property. So I've linked here this training. OK, we're not going to watch it because it's already 408. OK, OK, but he's got yeah, a handsome guy. He's lost so much weight over the years. Right. But uh, he's got the previewing approach. People don't know I'm training over here. So there's that link. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all, OK. Got it. OK. So there's that. And then you also have. Right. So here's essentially ways to preview the property. Now, here's the thing on this. Don't say you'll bring them a buyer and then show up by yourself. Then I, I hear agents, say, well, we'll just tell them that you have a buyer. And then, you know, oh, my buyer canceled, but I still want to preview the property. I would kick you off my property. I would never sell a house myself, but I would still kick you off my property because that is the lamest, cheesiest ass thing you could ever possibly do. Okay. So don't be that person. Okay, now here's the thing on for sale by owners. Stay local. Stay local. Property is a for sale by owner in Corona. You work in Diamond Bar. How many agents are between Diamond Bar and Corona? Hundreds. Thousands. Okay? So they're probably not going to work with you if you're an out-of-area agent. Okay? So, you know, we, well, I'm calling for, you know, I, I work in uh, Hemet and I'm calling for sale by, I got a list of for sale by owners everywhere. This one is in Irvine. They're not going to work with you. <laughs> not a personal thing. But if I, if I don't, if I don't trust real estate agents in general, I'm certainly not going to trust one to sell my house who lives 50 miles from me. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Stay local when it comes to for sale by owners, okay? Now, here's the thing. You need to have previewed all the homes that are for sale or have closed in the past 30 days. Okay. A for sale by owner is essentially saying, I don't think you're worth your money, right? I don't think you're worth the money. It's not that they don't like real estate agents because if you offered to do it for free, would they do it? Yes, they yeah. will. They understand that you are a professional. They simply just don't think you're worth the money, okay? Which is pretty standard. The general public generally does not think that real estate agents are underpaid, okay? So they don't think that you're worth the money. Well, how do I show them that I'm worth the money? I have to do stuff that they can't do. Can they go and see all the homes that are, that, that are for sale in their marketplace? Can they do that? No. They could do that, right? They can go to Redfin or Zillow and see what's for sale. Can they see what's closed in the last 30 days? They could see that too. So they have access to stats. They have access to things like that. What, do you, what don't they have access to? Well, they don't have access to see all the properties. They don't have access to go in all the properties because that's trespassing. Okay, You are a real estate agent. You have a legal trespassing pass. Isn't that neat? <laughs> <laughs> okay so if i preview all the homes i have a one up on them okay so i have that advantage you need to know the stats and trends of the specific area okay because again talking earlier right if you call the if you talk to a for sale by owner 
in October of last year when the, the, the homes were going like this, they were going down. I need, I need to be able to provide that. Hey, here's my concern for you, Mr. And Mrs. Sellers. You might be chasing the market down. All right. Now, now, now I'm going up, right? So now I've made the U-turn. So now I know my stats and trends. Well, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, let me ask you, how many offers have you gotten? Well, I've only gotten two offers. That's really interesting because the trend is that the homes are now selling above list price. Days on market are going down. It's really interesting that you've only had two showings. Clearly something's wrong because your home is not the standard for what's going on in the industry right now. Do you mind if I come by for 15 minutes and just see if maybe I can figure out why that is? Sure. Great. Okay. So I need to know the stats. I need to stay local. All right. The next thing I wrote down here, value proposition. Are there a lot of age, are there, are for sale by owners getting a lot of contacts from real estate agents? Okay. What separates you from all the ones that are calling them? Okay. Now this is a valuable exercise just to do in general, but certainly when you're calling for sale by owners, can you identify three to four value propositions that separate you from the competition? And here's the important part. Can you articulate them? Well, what separates you? Well, I know the contracts really well. Articulate it. What does that mean? How does that help me? Well, I, I, I know the mar I'm a market expert. What does that mean? Right? Can you articulate it in a way that it makes the seller go, wow, that's really impressive? Okay, so you need to have three or four value propositions. So let me give you an example. Well, Mr. and Mr. Seller, one of the valuable pieces of working with me is that I preview 20 homes a day or 20 homes a week, 40 weeks a year. So roughly I see about 800 homes in the marketplace. Can I tell you why that's important? Sure. Well, I know I've been inside all the homes that have sold. I've been inside all the homes that haven't sold. I've been inside the homes that sat on the market for 90 days. I've been inside the homes that sold in three days. I've been inside the homes that sold for above list price. I know I've been inside the homes that sold below list price. I know everything there is to know about pricing property and selling property in this marketplace. Do you think that's a value for you? Oh, I think that's very valuable. Great. That's one of my propositions. Okay. You got, so you got to, you got to have three or four of those. Now as a homework assignment, which I know probably most of you won't do. Okay. But I throw it out there anyways, write them out, send them to me. And I'll give you some feedback on them. More importantly, it just means you're going to do it because it's not like I'm some magical person that's going to critique it and say, no, that's wrong. Your, yours is going to be fine. I just want you to do it. Don't be vague. Okay. Like I said, don't do all that stuff. Uh, don't just say things like negotiating. Okay. So let me, let me give you an example. Well, I'm a great negotiator. What does that mean? Well, Mr. Miss Seller, here's the thing. You could probably get someone to buy, to give you a good price on your home, but that's not really where it ends. Can I explain? Sure. Have you ever seen an inspection report? Well, no, not really. Okay. Well, the inspector is going to do a report on your house and they're going to make it seem like your house is a decent wind from blowing away. That's the inspector's job. Okay. And which means that that buyer that gave you the 700,000 is gonna ask for 50, 60, $70,000 in repairs. Are you willing to do that? Oh, no way. Well, if you don't have somebody negotiating for your behalf and knowing what's real and what's not real, this is gonna cost you 60, 70 grand, which means you're either gonna have to come out 60, 70 grand to pay for it, or you're gonna have to cancel the listing. Gosh, I'm only charging you 20 grand to benefit your behalf, right? Got to know your value propositions. Questions on any of that? Yeah. If you can't do that, don't call. Monday. Best time to call expired is Monday. Why? Why Monday? Because, of course, it's after the weekend. It's supposed to have a lot of showings during the weekend, and you want to see what is going on. There it is. Most for sale by owners are expecting people to go see their house on the weekend. So if I call a for sale by owner on Thursday, they're going to say, well, we, we, we're going to have an open house this weekend. Friday, we're going to have an open house this weekend. But on Monday, I get to call them. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. for sale by owner, 
How did it go? Okay. Now here's the trick. No matter how it went, make it sound awful. Well, it was great. We had six people come through. Six people. That's it? And two offers? Really? Oh, my well, God. Well, well, what do you mean? Isn't six good? Well, I mean, maybe. But, I mean, I, 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 I did an open house last week where we had 30. So it's just really surprising to me in this marketplace that you only had six people come through. How many offers did you get? Well, we haven't gotten any offers yet. Yeah, I haven't gotten any offers yet. I, I'm just, again, I'm really surprised because homes are selling above list price and the days are marking on down. And, you know, I'm just really surprised that you only had six people show up and you haven't received any offers yet. I mean, I, I hate to, and at this point, they're just deflated, right? But two of them said they were going to write an offer. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've been doing this for a long time. And if I was waiting for those people to write me offers, I'd be broke. You know how many people have told me they're writing offers and I never see them? Do you want an offer? Yes. Do you want a good offer? Yes. Then we need to meet for 15 minutes and figure out how we can get you an offer next weekend that you didn't get this weekend. Okay. Monday's great time. Great time. All right. I'm kind of speeding through the for sale by owner because we're already over time. All right. Replacement property. If they're buying a replacement property, start by helping them there. See, sometimes with a for sale by owner, we're, we're butting heads over the listing. Well, Mr. Mr. Let me ask you, if you do sell this house, what are you going to do? Well, I need to buy a house as well. I need a bigger house. Who's helping you with that? I don't have anyone. Let me do it. Because best case scenario, I find them a property. Will they get their offer accepted on the property that I find them? If, they, if their home is not in the escrow? No. 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 But I did my job. Mr. Marcella, I did my job. I found you a property. We didn't get our offer accepted because your home is not selling. Let me help you get your house sold. <laughs> okay. Right? Or... Worst case scenario, I help them find a replacement property. They do get to sell it themselves. So, but at least I secured my buyer's commission. Instead, we're butting heads trying to get the listing. It's like if they're fine at going to replace my property, let me help them there. Let me get something out of this. Okay. All right. And then the last point here on for sale by owners. Their objection is commission. That's it. Okay. It is commission. Don't play dumb about it. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, why are you selling it yourself? Oh, I just think I could do a better job. No. It's money. It's money. It's 100% money. Okay? So you have to start having that money conversation prior, prior to even talking to them. So here's what I mean. We ask a seller, okay, because we think about a uh, for sale by owner and they say, well, they're trying to save the 6% commission. They're not trying to save 6%, are they? How much are they trying to save? All of it. <laughs> no, but the, how much are they trying to save? They're not trying to save six. Three percent. Yeah, they're trying to save whatever the listing agent is. See, we get in the mentality of a for sale by owner is that, oh my gosh, well, I got to come over, you know, I got to overcome a 6% commission. No, they're going to pay the buyer's agent more than likely. They don't want to pay the listing side. Okay. So. You, you just, you just have to fig. You just have to overcome two percent, two and a half percent, whatever your commission is as a listing agent, three percent. You just have to overcome that, which is so much easier to do than six. Are you with me so far? Yes. It's you're not trying to save six percent. You're not trying to overcome six percent. I just have to convince them that I'm worth two percent. 3%, whatever your number is, 
That's so much easier to do. Okay. So let me ask you this. Are you willing to take a listing at 2.5% to the listing agent? Would you do it? Sure. Yeah. Are you are you willing to give a buyer's agent 2%? Would you take a listing giving a buyer's agent 2%? Yeah. Yes. Everybody say yes. Everybody say yes. Great. Yes. So two point five plus two is four point five. You are willing to take a listing at four point five percent. Everyone agrees. Yes. Yes. So I go to a for sale by owner, and they say I'll give the buyer's agent three percent. Okay. Which means I know they're willing to pay three, and I know I'm willing to take a listing at four point five which means I'm only 1.5% off. Everybody with me so far on this? Okay. Yes. They don't care who, they're just only willing to pay three. I'm willing to take it for 4.5. So, and so just focus on the fact that you, do, you only have to show them that you're worth 1.5% more than they are. That's all I have to do. Mr. Marcella, I am worth 1.5% more. You're already willing to pay three. I'm willing to take the listing at 4.5. And then you just alter the numbers. And I get 2.5 as the buyer's agent gets two. Mm. Okay. But I, I'm only overcoming 1.5% in this scenario. Based on my plan of action, my schedule, my organization, my market knowledge, my follow-up, do you think I'm worth 1.5%? Probably. That's all we're off, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Let's go. Okay. You got to start thinking about that ahead of time. Like, how am I going to come at this? Don't come at it. I'm overcoming 6%, 4%, 5%. What is the minimum number I need to overcome? Okay. And then just focus on that number. So much easier to tell you. Because now to a seller, it's like, wow, well, I guess to their point, I'm really only paying an additional 1.5%, but I'm working with a professional that does all these other different things. A little more reasonable. Questions on the for sale by owner plan of action. Wow. Is <clears throat> that helpful? Very. All right. Thank you there so you much, go. Ron. Hey, thanks for being here. All right, so I post. I just I posted the expired plan of action earlier. I just posted the for sale by owner plan of action, so you can download those and do what you want with it. All right, last chance. Questions on any of the stuff we went over today? Okay. All right. That's all I got. Hopefully you got something out of this today. Hopefully it's helpful and kind of gets you going in the right direction on expires and for sale by owners. Barbara, I know are you going to post the scripts? I did. I didn't. They didn't come up. Only the, the plan of action, not the script. Oh, the scripts. The link to the scripts is in the plan of action. Oh. Mm. Yep. So if you open up the plan of action, the links are all in, in that document. I know it's a lot. And I know it's frustrating and I know it takes time and all that stuff, but it's, it's a short amount of time to get really good at something that you can get good at later on. Otherwise we have a lot of agents in our company. And this is one of the things that people get really mad at me about. And I don't know why they do it. I'm only trying to help. We have a lot of agents in our company. I'd say stop calling expires because they've for 10 years, they haven't gotten any better. Okay. Take the time, right? Do the work get really good at it because that's when you can start generating some business off of expired listings. Make Perfect. sense? So I don't I want to question. coordinate this. Yes. With oh, sorry. Go ahead, Caesar. Uh, who's going to take action on this with some accountability? I'll let you all figure out. looks like in the chat box, there's been a bunch of people commenting already on that. So I'll let you all take advantage of that. I am only here to help with whatever you all want me to do. If you want me to hold you accountable, I'm more than happy to do that. Most people don't want me to do it because I actually will, okay? There's a famous story in our company. Jack Ma did a mastermind interview and he said, you know, one of the things that helped turn my career around was, was Robert really holding me accountable on our coaching calls. So this, this girl 
the next day goes, Robert, I want you to hold me accountable the same day you do Jack. And I said, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. You're not ready for that. I do. No, no, you're not ready for that. You got to you gotta work your way up there. No, no, no. I want you to do it. Okay. So the very next, so I had a call with her and, the, and I held her accountable. And the next day she quit. True story. Mm. True story. And all I did was you said you were going to do this. What got in the way? And then I wouldn't buy into any of the excuses. Well, is this? I, no, those are excuses. Those are because it wasn't life events. Life events. Uh, I'm 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 a kind-hearted guy. Right? I got kids. I got dogs. Like, but it wasn't a life event. It was just excuses, and I wouldn't accept. I wouldn't accept the excuses. So then she quit. <laughs> so I'm not mean, but I. If you give me accountability, I will hold you accountable. So I'm willing to help in any way possible. But don't get mad at me when I say, "Well, what got in the way?" You know, no, that's that's an excuse, and I'm not going to accept that. Okay. And if you think I'm harsh, do you want to know who my accountability partner is? He's the guy speaking on stage in two weeks. <laughs> you imagine me trying to get away with stuff with him. But, but Mike, his favorite thing. Okay, fine. Stop it. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so Caesar, there's people in the chat box. People can share their numbers. I am willing to help. I am the biggest cheerleader, so I'm willing to help in any way possible. But, you know, don't get mad at me if I don't buy the excuses. Um, Tyrone, what was your question? Uh, I was just going to say how do we kind of coordinate this with Vegas, but I guess we just find a way to get it done, right? Even while we're Okay, there. so the Superstar Retreat, Superstar Retreat makes role play difficult. Right. Okay. You could still handwrite the scripts. Right. Okay. You're going to be in a hotel room. Right. You can still handwrite the scripts. The role play becomes a little more, more difficult. So you might have to push the role play a week. Okay. Unless because it's somebody there's, there there's, at the bar. <laughs> yeah. Unless you do it with somebody there at the bar. Yeah. Um, if you're single, <laughs> if you're single, this could probably help. You know, I'm just look at look. I obviously you're single. I'm curious. When do you plan on interviewing the right guy for the job of potentially going on a date with you? Oh boy! Oh my god! Well, well. So Milton James and I had this conversation. <laughs> Milton James and I had this conversation at lunch one day about how um, so much of our lives have evolved because we've been so ingrained in the Mike Ferry system it has been so much involved in our lives. And so when I, I met my wife, Amber, one of the things was, you know, I got her number and I called her the very next day and she was surprised. She's like, well, I didn't expect you to call me the very next day. I said, aggressive lead follow up. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. So, all part of the process, folks. Works, yeah. works, works everywhere. Worked. <laughs> Why don't you sign the contract? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. So, so all we need to do now is simply, sign you know, sign, uh, yeah, sign the contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time. And well, well, that, you know, so yeah, there you go. It's it's aggressively follow up. So yeah, sure, Tyrone. You know, if you want to, you know, practice some uh, expireds, you know, you could probably do that. You know, um, sure at the bar and. You know, have some fun. Of course, it's Vegas. That might cost you a lot of money in the long run, but that's, you know, <laughs> story for another day. Um, but yeah, there you go. Good stuff. All right. Well, look, I'm, I'm around. Okay. So if I can help out with any of this stuff, if I can help out with accountability, if, if, if I can help out with any of this stuff, utilize me. Okay. I'm available to, to help. Okay. Um, I'm never mean. I'm never mean, despite rumors of that Robert's mean. I'm not mean. I'm just, you know, I'm a cheerleader. I don't get paid unless you do. So it's kind of in my best interest to help. All right, everybody. That's all I got. That's good. Uh, all right. Thank you, Robert. Keep up the good work. Go get them. Again, I'll be out all day tomorrow. I'll be in Marietta. So if you're in Marietta, I'll see you in Marietta tomorrow, but I won't be on Zoom. I'll be at a company meeting all day. So uh, if you need me tomorrow, just call me or text me, but I won't be on here. And then I'll be back at it uh, Friday. So there you go. All right. Thanks. Bye.